yet underway. Uh, I'll apologize in advance. I will admit I have not run through and timed this, so I might be a little bit under, I might be a little bit over. Um, anyone who was here at 8 o'clock this morning, I spent more time practicing singing than I did uh, speaking. So <laughs> we're going to, uh, this, this will be our first time run, which, uh, yes, I know that's, that's a faux pas, but we'll uh, hopefully not be overly long and we'll give you some uh, good information that you can use for understanding how Drupal CI works and how you could potentially use it in, in your own testing within your own organizations or how it will be deployed on Drupal.org. So as we get going here. And technical difficulties which happen when you uh, finish your demo environment uh, 30 seconds before you start presenting. <laughs> so a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a Canadian Drupal hobbyist from Regina, Saskatchewan in Canada. Uh, I call myself a hobbyist because my day job has absolutely nothing to do with Drupal. I'm a network engineer, uh, IT consultant with a company called SaskTel, which is the full service telephone provider that serves the province of Saskatchewan, Canada. Um, we do wireline, wireless, IPTV, uh, the full, full suite of telecom services. Um, but they do absolutely no Drupal, despite my best efforts for the last four years. Um, so, uh, you'll see on my badge, I'm currently employed by the Drupal community when it comes to, comes to my, my work with Drupal. Um, so, uh, on top of that, I also have a, that's my day job, I have a dad job. I'm a, a half-time single father to uh, five and six-year-olds who keep me busy every second week. So, uh, um, my evenings and weekends hobbyist is actually evenings and weekends every second week hobbyist, which is when I spend my time doing a number of Drupal jobs. Uh, and you can see there's quite a large list. So on top of Drupal CI, uh, I was involved with the Drupal.org v7 launch. I worked with, uh, I do some work with the infrastructure team. Um, I do some work with the technical working group on the governance side. Uh, also worked on some contrib projects. So extended file field is probably the, the most well known but not recognized one. It's actually the module that does the files table on Drupal.org. Uh, so that's on the contrib maintainer there. Um, also, uh, core contributor, DrupalCon volunteer, and just whatever itch I might be happening to, to scratch as far as a friends and family website module that might be needed at any given time. So that's a, from a hobbyist perspective, it's a it's a fairly fairly busy fairly busy list, um, and I'm going to have to add uh, Hollywood actor to that list after today as well. And for today, we're here talking about Drupal CI, a little bit of a, a little bit of a overview of the agenda. Typically, my speak or my talks on this topic have been about, well, here's the background, here's here's what it's about, here's why we're doing it, here's the very high level architecture. Uh, what I want to do today is do something a little more technical than uh, than I have in the past, and that might mean something, but most of those talks in the past haven't been recorded, so unfortunately. Uh, there's a, I can't sort of point back and say, this will give you the overview and this will give you the technical details. So I will go a little bit into that, into that background just, just so that everyone's on the same page as we get into the deep dive on the test runner. But from an agenda perspective, a little bit of background, talk about the design principles that went into the Drupal CI project, uh, some of the components of the project, and then we'll jump into the meat, which is the deployment models, how you can use this, and a deep dive into the test runner itself, which is the, the brains of the actual testing operation. And then with time, uh, do a little bit of a demo and usage, step through some steps to show uh, here's how you might use this uh, yourself. So the goal of the Modernizing Testbot Initiative, which was the initial initiative name for, for Drupal CI, uh, was really an attempt to go and redesign Drupal.org's automated testing infrastructure. So the current, the current uh, testing infrastructure is built on Piffer and Pift which were modules that were first built in 2006 and then refreshed in 2009. So we've been running six, seven years, nine years on, on the existing architecture, which 
in software terms, of course, that they're, they're dinosaurs. Um, also, we, we really needed to bring our testing capabilities up to speed using modern tools, modern uh, testing methods, and to support modern testing frameworks. Piffer and Piff were built that long ago as a single purpose, simple test stack. Uh, we tried to extend them in order to do things like code review uh, with, with the Coder project, but they were really architected for one purpose. And at Drupal CI, one of our goals is to uh, build a more flexible, generic job distribution framework that we can use that can evolve with the community as our testing uh, needs change over the, over the coming years. Uh, another goal was to simplify the infrastructure and maintenance of the platform. And we want to do this by reducing the amount of custom code in the stack, uh, reducing the barriers to entry as far as the how much code there is to learn in order to just get involved with the PIF, or that it took to get involved with the PIFR and PIF projects, and uh, hopefully facilitate new contributions by lowering that barrier of entry. So how we got here? Um, for about two years, I talked to a number of core devs saying our testing architecture is getting old and we need to renew it. We need to do something quick. When we release Drupal 8, the testing architecture is on Drupal 6. It's officially unsupported. So you're testing Drupal 8 with an unsupported platform. This is not somewhere we want to be. Um, and I pushed that for probably about 18 months, did not really get anywhere. And it wasn't until Bad Camp in 2013 that I realized that the problem was I was asking a bunch of core developers who are already really busy building Drupal 8 to come help me build something new, and they've got, they've got enough on their plate. At Bad Camp, I walked into the DevOps Summit and said, hey, I have an idea to build a testing framework. I want to make it look like this, and I had 21 people at my table like that, and I realized I'd spent two years talking to the wrong audience. Um, but at Bad Camp, we took, here's the architecture, here's what we want to do, said, what do you think, and had enough people say, if I was building it, that's how I'd build it, you're on the right track. So we walked out of Bad Camp in 2013 and started a new unofficial community initiative to go out and build this project. We then, next step was at uh, Dev Days in Seged in 2014. And we brought together a team to, at the sprint to say, well, let's see what we can build according to this picture. And within three days at Seged, uh, we had uh, a gentleman by the name of Ricardo Amaro built a fully functional prototype of the test runner um, in three days which did everything from installing Docker, starting the containers, and running test suites, and giving you the results. Um, from a proof of concept, it was absolutely amazing. Uh, what we did, though, what we did want, though, is to convert it over to PHP. Right at that time, it was a single bash script. We wanted to modularize it, make it a little more flexible so that we could apply it to a few other areas of the community as well. And so Austin was an attempt to start a rewrite. Amsterdam was a very, very integral from the perspective of the architecture of all the surrounding components around that test runner. And then in, in Bogota, we went and we did some final polishing with that. About a little over a month ago, we brought the entire team together, and that's folks from Canada, the US, Portugal, uh, Switzerland, we've got a project manager in India, uh, one in Australia, really an international team. We brought everyone together in Portland, uh, funded by the D8 Accelerate program, in order to all get together in one room for a week and try and uh, really progress the, the initiative forward. And uh, what we walked out of there was probably about 80% uh, of the way to what we need to get this actually tied into Drupal.org in the future. So that was absolutely fantastic. Our, my goal, and it's a bit of a stretch goal, um, is to release an alpha version of the test runner by the end of the extended screen set at this conference. So. Uh, we're, we're close. We've got one major outstanding piece, which is really just the publishing of the results after the test run runs, and if we can get that, we'll be releasing an alpha here uh, with, within the week, hopefully. So I talked about design principles. Uh, design principles for this project, modularity. We wanted a number of smaller independent components, a number of building blocks that we could then piece together in different ways to meet different use cases. Uh, second design principle was flexibility. We needed to be able to handle more than just simple test testing. Uh, we want to be able to do BHAT, front end frameworks, uh, AB testing, performance testing. We want to be able to automate tasks in the issue queue. Um, and, and as well, we want to be able to support the community with their own custom test scripts and testing capabilities that they want, that they want to, to try. Uh, 
So, so from an extensibility perspective, we want the community to be able to contribute new functionality to the platform. Um, so as we'll see a little later, we've got a plugin based architecture which really should simplify that process, uh, the process of the community coming in and giving us their own testing capabilities or, or building out their own needs on the framework that we produce. Uh, other design principles, multi-purpose. Once again, we don't want to build a single stack simple test testing framework anymore. We need a multi-purpose architecture. And the last one here is local first. 80% of the time uh, in my first two years as a test spot maintainer was spent answering the question, it works on my machine, my machine but doesn't pass on the test spot, why? And so number one on my plate is building a system that when someone comes and asks why it doesn't pass in the test spot, we can give them the test spot, have them test, debug, and troubleshoot locally, and take that off the maintainer's plate. So that's uh, def definitely a major goal with this initiative, and I think, we've, uh, I think we've done a good job on that. The approach we took was building the local testing environment first, and then extending it to work on, on Drupal.org and, and the surrounding ar architecture. So when we talk about components, there's a number of different architecture components that are involved in the full end to end stack. We've got Drupal.org, which initiates test requests, uh, both on commit and on demand. So we had to develop some integration with Drupal.org that can feed stuff off to our, off to our environment. We've got an API layer that uh, interfaces between Drupal.org and our dispatcher. And th this gives us a lot of flexibility in the future. So what this allows us to do, for example, is with a single dispatcher, we can take requests in from Drupal.org, or we can take them in from, say, a private security.drupal.org site. Or we could uh, change out the Jenkins dispatcher in the back end when the next new excellent dispatch product comes along. So, so we provided some abstraction layers to make this module enough that we can change out chunks of the product without having to change the code on Drupal.org or, or, or the code on the test spot itself. Um, then the dispatcher, as I mentioned, we've got a Jenkins server that's uh, running our, our job distribution. It's responsible both for job dispatch, but also for the, the uh, load, or load on demand. So with Jenkins, we can have Jenkins detect that, hey, I need this many test spots where they're all busy, and I can go to AWS and spin up more as needed. Right now, that's a human action. So when we get ready for a sprint, We've got, uh, right now, Archie sitting down at a computer for a little while building test spots in preparation for the sprint. And if we're ever behind, we never catch up because that, that demand builds so quickly. Come, come. I mean, Portland, I arrived at the Portland sprint. Uh, I was about 20 minutes late. There was already 100 patches in the queue. At the peak, there was 300 patches in the queue. And by 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we had 50 test spots built. So, so that on-demand feature is actually going to be really key to moving forward in the maintenance of, uh, of the architecture for us. Um, then we've got the test runner. That generates a test environment. That executes the job. That's, that's the brains of the actual testing operation, and I'll do a deep dive into that a little later. And then we've got a results API. So that's an abstraction layer between the test runner and the results server. Now, the reason we've done this is to be able to, for example, have the Drupal.org results server that we're sending results to, but you could also have, say, your own private results server um, that you also want to send those to. Or, as a uh, deployment model, which I'll get into, into a sec in a second, we can do a public results server separate from the Drupal.org results server that works kind of like a pastebin environment, and, and, uh, and I'll get into that in a second. So deployment models, of course, as I talked to, we have local testing first. That's you working with your local laptop. That's you with your own AWS instance doing, doing testing of whatever you're working on. But we can also, with the, a, the test spot and your own result server, we can support a private stack. So this might be within a company. You've got multiple devs, and you've got your own result server that you want to show, uh, just like Drupal.org would, but as a private instance. Um, a slightly larger company might put a Jenkins server in the middle of that. So we've built this with components in such a way that and, and made them all public to, uh, for the community to be able to use this and implement their own stack using these components if, if desired as well. Um, so there's the Drupal.org stack, which of course is uh, when you start talking public stacks, that's the one that everyone's going to be familiar with. Um, but we did want to be flexible enough to meet multiple use cases. So uh, the, the, this pastebin concept that I, that I mentioned, 
Imagine that you as a developer have done some code, you've wrote a patch, it gets, you've, you've tested it locally and you get a fail. <coughs> and you don't know where that fail is coming from. Um, what we could do potentially, and what we've been talking about doing with this, is put up a short term results server where you can then type in a command that will zip up your entire environment, including your database, your web directories, your test results, the, uh, and, and, and uh, the output of the job run. Zip that all up, load it up to a, a result server that someone else can now pull it down and they have the test run that you just ran there in front of them for them to troubleshoot. Uh, we have a lot of fails in Drupal that are, that are sort of a random nature. We have things that fail and then people can't reproduce the failure and so they upload the same patch to, to QA.do a uh, hundred times hoping that one of them fails and they happen to catch it and it can debug it. Well now we can take that random fail when it happens locally and the plan would be to upload it, share it, debug it together and then expire it off that results server after three days and you're able to upload it to Drupal.org when you've got the trouble, trouble solved. So. So those are the types of those are the types of things that we want to types of features that we want to try and enable for the community. Um, something more than just upload a patch to the issue queue and have that patch uh, return an hour later. Sorry, it failed, and then having to go try and reproduce that yourself. Um, another deployment model here, which I didn't put up on the slide, is is looking uh, in the Drupal.org stack. Um, being able to do non-testing jobs. So the framework that we built and the way that we built it could support, for example, a job type that automatically creates an interdiff when you pass it to an issue node. We've got a Jenkins server, we've got the environment, we've got the code checkout. There's no reason we can't just go in, do the git apply, do what we need, generate a file, and spit it back up to Drupal.org. So we're also looking to, gen we're looking to enable issue queue maintenance tasks and take some of that manual work away from the community as well. So I'm going to get into the, the actual test runner itself now. And this is, uh, the project is Drupal CI underscore test bot. It's on drupal.org. And this is the, the brains of the testing operation. Um, I wanted to provide some understanding about how it functions, how it operates, and hopefully give the community some of the background on what they would need to do in order to take it forward, use it for their own uses, and or extend it to provide additional testing functionality. So, so everything can be found on drupal.org. The application itself is a Symfony console application. So for, tho for anyone who's not familiar with Symfony console, it's, a, it's an extension on the Symfony framework that is built for or, or really leverage itself for building command line applications. So this is a command line application written in Symfony console. And in the, in the, direc or in the directory tree there on the, on the right, source Drupal CI contains the Symfony console uh, code. Uh, so if anyone's built with Symfony console before, that aspect of it should be quite familiar. Um, on top of that, we've built a plugin based architecture. So if you've worked with Drupal 8, a lot of the stuff uh, in there should also look familiar because we've pulled in Drupal's plugin discovery and plugin uh, annotation methods from Drupal 8. So what we're doing in order to discover plugins on the testing framework, we're using the Drupal component, reusing the Drupal components in order to do that. So if you've done D8 development, that part should also look familiar to you in Drupal CI. Um, now, even more specifically, the architecture of that plugin, or, or what we do with those plugins, if you worked on Migrate in Drupal 8, this will look very familiar. Um, during our Portland Sprint, Chicks turned to me and said, yeah, this looks exactly like Migrate. So, uh, so, the, so if you're familiar with Migrate, this should also look very familiar to you. Uh, the barrier to entry, it once again, should not be anywhere near as high as it was with Pip and Chipper. It took me about eight months to learn that code enough to be able to support it properly. So I mentioned it's a plugin based architecture. We have three main super categories of plugins. So we've got job types. A job type might be simple test, might be PHP unit, might be create an inner diff. We've got build steps, which are little which are the incremental steps that happen during a given job. And we have a number of pre-processing plugins. And I'll get into each of those. Um, 
when we talk about job types, um, the job type is really the large category over what we're doing. So if we're doing a BHET test, we'll have a BHET job type. If we're doing a Selenium test, we'll probably have a Selenium job type. What those types consist of is a job definition template, which, step, which just defines here's the things that I need to do, and a class that defines here's the different variables that I need to do that work, here's the default <coughs> values for those variables, and here's any custom mel logic that I need. So, so if I switch over here, pull up, uh, pull up my environment. Um, so this is, this is the job template for our PHP unit test. And essentially, I mean, this should look familiar to folks who worked with uh, some CI programs or CI systems before. Yeah, let's bring that up. What's the, what's the zoom keyboard shortcut for PHP Storm? gives me settings it doesn't give me any of <coughs> not on that particular page <laughs> no that was the first thing I tried That's the setting and it doesn't do it either. <laughs> hmm? No, I just turned on key change, change font size with the mouse wheel. But Not editable right now because I'm uh, in the middle of something. But so apologies for the small font, um, but this should look familiar if you've done some some CI work. Uh, what what it's got? It's it's a YAML file. It's key based. It's got the the build steps, and each step then has some sub steps. Um, the first, the the, fir the parent keys here are actually mapped to build step plugins, and then the secondary keys are mapped to pre-process plugins. Um, so we've got environment, web, and then we've got inside percent signs DCI PHP version. So what this is is a variable substitution template, basically. So if you were to set DCI PHP version equals 5.4. When you do the Drupal CI run command, it'll substitute that in and it'll choose that the, pr the appropriate container for your five PHP 5.4 environment. It then runs through a setup step, some checkout, uh, a get checkout, and the syntax for defining a get checkout. And then it runs an execute, which is, uh, again, just placeholders right now, but DCI run script, the default is PHP unit. Options, run options includes things like color and some of the default options that you might want on PHP unit. And then the run target, which is the, the groups, for example, that you might want to run. Um, all of that, because it's variable substitution and we have plugins for it, can be <coughs> customized by setting environment variables on your local machine as, as you run it. The class itself is, is very small. It's got available arguments, 
just from a documentation perspective, it'd be nice to show people what arguments you can use for running on that job, and the default, default values for those arguments. So as we're building a new job type, that's really, we need to define those two files. So that's the definition template and the job class. got into the wonderful state I started this in. So apparently the slide transitions are not going to be my friend today. So the next uh, plugin type that we have are the build steps. So these are th these are the build steps which are available as plugins in the system right now. Uh, so configure, validate, set up an environment. These four will run on any job type. Configure basically pulls together all your environment variables, builds out your job definition, validate, make sure that you have all your required variables, and then set up, sets up your directories, does your code checkouts, does your copies, gets the uh, code base that you want tested set up, and then environment defines what containers you're gonna use in order to do that. So those four will run on any type. After that, we've got install, execute, complete, success, failure, publish. These are just examples, and as long as a plugin exists, uh, you can use, sorry, you can put whatever you want at in as a build step, and if a plugin exists for it, it will execute the logic in that plugin. So when we looked at PHP unit template, we basically had environment and execute. There's no Drupal install step, so that was all we needed for that, for that particular template. So then within each build step, there are sub-steps that are run, and not all sub-steps are tied to a single build step. So inside setup, we have checkout, we have fetch, we have patch, we have different setup steps that you might want to do to build out your environment. However, something like command, which runs an arbitrary script or an arbitrary command, you might want to do that and inside any build step. So there's a generic build step, which contains those uh, types of tasks you might want to do at any point. Inside the directory structure, these are the directories under the plugins directory. So if you look at plugins build steps, you get these step or these uh, build step directories, and then the plugins that can operate inside that directory are, are located, or sorry, inside that build step are located in those individual directories. Um, and then I mentioned it's not a hard coded list of build steps that your jobs need to fit into. Um, it's easily extensible with new build steps. Uh, you can just add the plugin that has the logic required for that. And as, as, long, as, you, as long as you make that available, um, we're more than happy to also contribute it back to the project so that other, builds, or other people can also use that logic and, and extend it forward. So the third type of plugin is pre-process so pre plugins. And this is really where a lot of our magic happens. There's two types. There's uh, <coughs> definition pre-processing, and then there's variable pre-processing. So when I showed that template, it had those build steps. Um, you'll notice for that uh, PHP unit, there was, no, there was no setup build step. So there was no patching, there was no fetching patches or applying patches in that. By defining, a DCI fetch um, variable, it will go out, look for the fetch definition preprocessor, which essentially adds the section to the job definition that you need to do to fetch a patch. So once again, you set DCI fetch with proper syntax, it will insert that into the job type for you. 
So, so the PHP unit job, you may want to run on just a straight code base. You may want to patch it. You may want to run it after the patch. All that flexibility is handled with the same template through the use of these pre-processing uh, plugins. Um, so a definition pre-processing plugin adds a new section to the job definition. And, that, and that's why we call it definition. And that section then does the variable substitution that we, that we had. However, we learned very quickly that that wasn't quite enough. We had variables that we might want to set that don't directly substitute into the template, but actually change or augment the value of another variable. So that's where we created this concept of variable preprocessors. An example here is uh, the DCI run script variable defines what is the run script that you actually want to kick off this job with. So for PHP unit, the run script variable is PHP unit. But you may want to add an alternative argument to that. And so when you run the run script, we don't want to run PHP unit, we might want to run PHP unit dash X, Y, Z. And so what we needed was a way of adding, taking an environment variable that would then change the value of another environment variable. And that's what these variable preprocessing uh, tasks do. So as we move forward, uh, terrible coloring there. Test runner execution, there's a class called run command, which is the symphony console run command. It does a compile your definition, validate your definition, set up your directories, and then for each build step, it loops over the sub steps and executes run. Very, very basic logic flow from that perspective. Um, the steps that, are, that we have, the four that I talked about that will really be there on any, on any <coughs> job, include environment, which starts your service containers and starts your executable containers. Uh, then we've got the setup build step, which sets up your working directories does your copy or your checkout of your code, any fetches, any patches, um, and any permission changes that you might need. So it sets up the code base on your local machine. The environment step starting those executable containers then maps that local code base into the container so that it can be operated on. Um, then the execute build steps, runs the test scripts and commands, and then what we'll have at the end, which wasn't in our templates because it's the outstanding piece we need to develop, is the publish build step, which gathers all your artifacts together, runs your email notifications or, or rest posts notifications, uh, or publishing to the group.org results server. So that last circle there is the outstanding piece that is preventing us, or that is um, in between us and our alpha release. We talk about containers. Uh, these are all Docker containers. And what we're providing is uh, a number, a, a full container stack for both the service containers, all the databases for the environments we might support, as well as the PHP and or web container stack for different versions of PHP. Um, we've got a stack, it's, it's, it's a layered stack. If, if you're familiar with Docker, uh, we try to take advantage of the, of the caching. But we've since moved it to Docker Hub, which doesn't pay attention to the caching and uh, that so, so you'll have the containers there, can build them locally. If you want to pull, then it might, which is our default mechanism, it might take a little while to build it the first time. And as we get into demo there, I, I, I can show you some of that. Um, but the container types, there's two types. There's executable containers and service containers. Your service containers are the databases, essentially. So they run as a service, and then when you start your executable container to do the testing, it'll connect, link across to the database container and use it for, for the test job. The configuration for these containers is also in the code base. And bad example. So we've essentially got YAML files which give you the Docker configuration for the container that you're going to start up. So if you're wanting to go in and extend this and you need to add another volume mount, you need to expose different ports, it takes the Docker syntax right here in the, in the configuration file. Uh, if we look at the database configuration files, you can see the difference there is we actually expose the database service ports, for example. So this is all straight Docker syntax, if you're familiar with Docker. 
those, uh, that syntax can go right into this file and it's, it's then added to that container. And I'm really going to have to stop context switching here. So that really brings us to what I was going to do as far as some, some usage and demo stuff. And uh, so I'll, I'll just bring that up and we'll go from there. Increase the font before I do that. Of course, the first thing you're going to do is pull down the test bot project. Uh, we package it with a Vagrant box, so if you're on Windows or, or Mac, then you can uh, do, do the Vagrant up. It'll run through the entire uh, provisioning script. It'll also do some initial setup for you, just to make the environment a little easier to, easier to use. The, the, Drupal, the actual script itself is the Drupal CI script. Uh, and that's, that's the name of the, the script we're going to call it. The first thing you're going to want to do after you download and install this is a Drupal CI init. And what this will go through, it'll go ensure you've got Docker, make sure your versions are, are, are accurate. Um, eventually we'll do dependency calculations, make sure you've got all your dependencies are okay there. And then it goes through and it will download from Docker Hub the containers that you'll need for the environment. This went rather quick. Uh, given that I already have the most current containers locally, that process could take you 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes depending on your internet connection and things like that. It's a first time build issue. Um, once they're there, then uh, it, it, you, you can use them ongoing and uh, you should not have to update them as often once we've got to an alpha state. But it then prompts you what database environments do you want to support? And what this is going to go is grab the database containers for the, for the environments you want. Um, I'm going to, just because I already have it, I'm going to go with uh, my people here right now <coughs> just to ensure we've got a quick and snappy pull. And then it asks, what uh, PHP versions do you want to support? Um, here we're going to go with uh, PHP 5.4 for the moment. And you can ignore that warning. That's because I already have an environment and forgot to clean it up before I did the demo. But that's the power of live demos, right? Um, it actually leads us into the next thing that you're going to want to do after download and install, which is select your configuration set. What configuration do you want to do? Or set up the configuration for your local testing environment. So for that, we set basically environment variables, or we have a configuration management, little dummy configuration management system built in. So for the Drupal CI config command, has a little bit of a little bit of a settings management built into it. So just a sh I'll, I'll start by blanking this out and step you through the actual steps. So I'm doing, I know you can't see it on the screen, but doing Drupal CI config load blank. <coughs> Ooh, blank doesn't exist. Okay. Okay, so I didn't quite finish setting up my uh, environment before we started this. Well, 
we did create an argument to uh, help us with these items. So we can post it out. There. Um, so I, I basically loaded a blank configuration set that's got no settings. Yeah, so blank is the name of the configuration set that, that, that I was trying to load, just to, to blank out all, all of my current Drupal CI settings. A um, couple of things I'm going to do here, and these, this isn't documented, should be eventually. I'm, instead of a git checkout, I want to use my local code bases. So there's a, there's a variable there I can set. <coughs> so all the variables are namespaced DCI underscore. And then this particular one is use local code base. And where is the local code base that I want to use? Um, the other thing I'm going to want to do is I want to use simple test jobs by default. Uh, rather than typing Drupal CI run simple test, I want it to default to simple test. So I can set a variable for that. That's our job type variable. And I don't want to run the full test suite because we'd be here for a awfully long time. So we want to set the test groups that we're going to run. And we'll stick it to the action test group for now. Um, the last thing uh, which I, which I do want to do for here this is s explicitly specify which database version we're going to test against. So Drupal CI config set DCI DB version is MySQL 5.5. .5. Now, with those items set, um, I should be at this point now where I can simply, oops, Drupal CI run because it, it's getting awfully close to 6 o'clock. Hmm? I did. Okay, and therefore we're going to wait through a clone. It, it is a shallow clone, so uh, we're at thirty percent. And so, essentially, that's how you would go forward man, uh, using the environment. Now, what I can do, I set those those four parameters, and working on Drupal eight core, I can then do a config save my D eight core. Oops, load switch over to another project, set whatever I need to retest that project, and at any time in the future, Drupal CI config load my D8 core setup, and I can swap back and forth uh, from different projects like that. Um, so it went through, it's running, it created the uh, container instances, and now it's executing run tests on that container. If we scroll up here a little bit, um, it tells us it first loaded the platform default argument, uh, then some job type default arguments. So these are all specified in the simple test job class. And then the local overrides that I set. So it's telling you here's the hierarchy of variables that we're using. And you'll have variables that show up in multiple of those. The further down the, further down the list they are, they trump everything above them. Um, next step, it generated our code base data volume, uh, created a checkout directory, determined what containers it needed, made sure that those images existed on the local machine, which was part of that init step. <coughs> and then uh, did the checkout, uh, then created our results directory. In purple, these are all executed on the container itself. So everything above that was done on my local machine. Now in purple, we're on the container. Created results directory, created results XML directory for us. Uh, did some permission changes that we need in order to be able to write those results onto the end of the container, um, created, a, created our database, and then this is the Drupal script run test.sh line that it then executed on that container. And then as we go down here, <coughs> took about uh, one minute to run through the default actions suite. So um, I'll fix that uh, little typo. And then we'll set our 
the DV version. Postgres 9.1. And we're now, I mistypoed my fix of the typo. And we're now executing against the Postgres database. So that was one of the major goals of this, is to expand the number of environments that we're able to test against with drupal.org. Um, as of this week, we can test PHP 5.4, 5.5, 5.6, and 7. We have containers for all four suites against SQLite, Postgres, MariaDB, and MySQL. So we're, we're expanding to meet the minimum coverage requirements for the core developers for what they want to test or against uh, as they come towards a, a Drupal 8 release. So with that, that is more or less what I had for you today. Um, I want to talk a little bit about e extending Drupal CI and the task for that. Um, I'll, I'll leave a slide in here for how you would go about doing that, what are the steps. Really it's create a new directory, create a PHP class, create a default template, and create any custom plugins you need for that logic. And that, that, that's the steps, the four steps that you need in order to extend this for, for your own custom testing needs. Um, but with that, I'll, uh, I'll uh, certainly ask, provide any feedback that you can on, on the session. Uh, each of the sessions has a page on the, on the conference website uh, where you can provide feedback on the session. Definitely helps speakers like myself uh, to prepare for future sessions and, and that feedback is, is definitely encouraged and definitely uh, desired. Uh, so please, uh, please do that. And I'll open it up for the last 10 minutes here. Any questions or discussions that people might have? So I have a question. So what is the difference between when we run PHP run uh, test run dot sh file from Drupal folder in uh, our local environment, whereas we don't use Drupal CI? The the main thing is that uh, when you run it locally, you're running it against your local environment. You may have uh, modules that were installed manually on that site, or you may have a PHP version that doesn't match what the test spots run. You may have different Apache configurations. And that's where we run into the issues where people run a test locally, it passes, okay, it's good, I upload it to the issue queue and the test spot rejects it. So we really want to ensure that we're providing the same testing environment on the test spot as we are uh, on the local environment so that we don't run into those conflicts anymore. That's, that's the primary reason behind it. Um, definitely, by all means, as you're developing, run it locally with PHP run tests, but before you send it up to the test spot, let's make sure, or, or this is another step we can do to validate that it will pass once we send it to the test spot. Yeah, thank you. So as we saw in the demo, you know, just doing a, a couple typos or not understanding all these environmental variables can lead to some frustration. Um, what what do you think is the next step for improving the uh, the brittleness of some of the uh, environmental variables and in, in the pre-process, I guess their variable pre-processing? Yeah, the, the, the number one key is going to be initially documentation. Uh, um, we, we certainly rec uh, recognize that. Um, we've been charging full speed ahead because we're listed as a critical blocking D8, trying to get some function into drupal.org so that we can do the testing that, excuse me, that unblocks that critical. But as we get to an alpha here, definitely documentation is going to be a number one key thing. We won't have the stability. We'll still have that brittleness at, at an alpha release. But if we can at least show people how to get around it. Once that alpha is released and we've unblocked the D8, uh, D8 critical that's tagged against us, then we'll be able to move forward with the, with the polish and the refinement of those variables, those plugins, adding things like uh, debug verbosity into the, into the client, adding support for items like, uh, like monologues so that we can then actually provide detailed debugging information that will tell somebody that, yeah, the, this didn't work because of X. Um, so that, that'll be a big push uh, definitely before a beta. 
um, but probably a post-alpha push for us. Hey, uh, I noticed there's a project for uh, Drupal CI for, uh, for a Puppet module to deploy it, and, uh, but the project is empty. So I was just wondering what the status with that is, or if there's a plan, or if just nobody's touched it yet, but that's somewhere you really want to go. Yeah, uh, so that was part on. of the, sorry, that was, that was part of the initial plan, is that we, w we would have, because it's what we did with Piffer and Piff, we, mm -hmm. have, we have a Puppet master for that, and that's how we structured the project initially. Uh, we move forward, and, and I'll maybe, uh, if I miss anything, I'll get the, the guys in the back there to, to probably uh, augment my answer here. Uh, but we did move forward. We've, we've got some Packer build scripts that are actually building AMIs uh, on AWS. So, so rather than giving you a Puppet script, we are creating the AMIs for folks that they can then consume. And, and those will be, I believe those will be public AMIs for, for anyone to be able to spin up an instance of, of the test runner that if they want. Um, right now, that AMI is the full Jenkins slate, but it contains the test runner. So, so we're looking to to do that. We've also uh, set up the some, some automated uh, building on Docker Hub from from our repositories. So some of the chaining that we need, so that when we commit so a new change to production, we'll automatically get that change built into the containers. Uh, so when, so if you're on your local environment, uh, a pull will refresh the container, and and you'll have have the latest builds there. Did you want to augment that, Pace, or yeah. Rudy? Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, so, so, so for the for the recording there, the uh, the puppet mod or the puppet was initially intended as that separate module. The puppet steps are now built into the individual uh, projects themselves. So Packer, for example, has, does, has the puppet deploy stuff and the manifest and stuff within that particular project. Hi. Um, just listen to your talk. It seems that this project is not